Deontay Johnson is a Carolina Panther in a pretty straightforward trade here. Hayden Winks, the Panthers deal away, cornerback Dante Jackson, and a six-round pick, 178. Get in return, Deontay Johnson, who has one year left on his deal, and then a seventh-round pick. So they basically drop back 62 spots here and get the best wide receiver on their team. By a wide margin, um, I'm curious why Deontay Johnson's price tag wasn't higher than this. Like they're yeah. The Steelers are eating money. The Panthers are signing him for basically a one-year $10 million contract. We've talked about players like Darnell Mooney and Gabe Davis making more than that for more seasons in a row. So I was kind of confused that like this was all it took to get Deontay Johnson. What's up with that? Is either he overrated in fantasy land or is this just a fantastic deal for the Panthers? Or is it that Deontay Johnson just really wanted out of Pittsburgh, which I would understand. Well, so multiple points to hit on there. First one from beat writer, Mark Caboli, a hundred percent Deontay Johnson wanted this trade. Like I said, two weeks ago. So there's that aspect of it. It's weird. Dante Jackson was going to get cut by the Carolina Panthers. Mm -hmm. um, they were not going to pay his roster bonus. That was coming up in a few days. They mentioned his name out there with NFL reporters as basically like, Hey, if you want him, let's swap picks. And then now once again, the Panthers get Deontay Johnson, and that's basically for $10 million this year. I will say it. Other than Calvin Ridley, I think Deontay Johnson would have been the best wide receiver on the free agent market. Do you think that's a wild take? Uh, I think I'd rather have Hollywood, but Deontay understands the like the love for him. He, he's a very inconsistent player. Like oh, we Right before we went live, and we went back and watched him, and he's undersized, which means that at the catch point, there are lapses. I also thought that he would not be on the same page with his quarterback at times as well. But all the other parts of his game are true. Like this guy, his tempoing, his ability to cut uh, at the route is fantastic. And that's why he gets open so often. Do you think that there's also a reason why his like yards per target and stuff is down and why he's fairly inconsistent uh, year over year? But he is by far the biggest upgrade the Panthers have made on offense um, since Bryce Young has been drafted. Totally. Um, I know he's not your typical frame at 5'11 and 186 pounds, but he has played a whole bunch of snaps as an X wide receiver, you know, as the isolated wide receiver on the line of scrimmage and ask you to win against your man one-on-one. -on, -one. Uh, on all of these snaps, let me ask you to, I know so many of you watched the Carolina Panthers last season, <laughs> who on the Panthers can do any of this stuff? Who on the Panthers right. can threaten a cornerback vertically and then on a three-way go be able to turn on a dime and create all of that separation? No one. In fact, the complete and total lack of vertical speed and verticality of any wide receiver on the team put a ceiling on these pass catchers at about 10 yards on the field and corners and safeties were sitting on everything. So that just condensed every single passing play over and over again. And then plus, if there was tight coverage, uh, you couldn't have players who create sliver of spaces and constantly there were corners in the pockets of their opposition. Now, as you're pointing out here, like Deontay Johnson is not a perfect player. And I think immediately what pops into the public's head is what happened in the 2020 season when he had 15 drops attributed to his name. Uh, he had eight drops in 2021, eight drops in 2022. This past season that uh, declined that number. But look, drops can be bad, especially when they happen at the most inopportune times. But more importantly is to me, the consistent part of his game is creating that separation and sustaining it mm -hmm. and really winning in those basketball esque mm -hmm. isolated movements, crossovers, as you said, the tempo of his routes. And that's tough to find. That is mm -hmm. tough to find for dropping 70 spots in the draft in the sixth to the seventh round yeah. and for just $10 million next year. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't know why he was traded for this little, but the Panthers should be relieved. He'll be the X wide receiver for this season, the Adam Thielen in the slot. And then I think it's going to be a competition for the second outside wide receiver spot. And I don't think because this currently is a one year 
$10 million deal. We'll see if the Panthers do an extension long-term with him. This does not prevent the Carolina Panthers for drafting another wide receiver with these two top 40 picks now that they have with the Brian Burns trade. So I think that they need some size now, like Adam Thielen and Deontay Johnson. They can do some fun things in the intermediate and shallow parts of the field. We've seen Deontay win vertically on the sideline as well, but they need somebody in the red zone that can go crazy here to kind of match their identity, what they did with the offensive line in the interior and in free agency. So I think that Deontay Johnson is a great first addition here, but this, this wide receiver group needed multiple additions. And I think that the second one is going to be coming in the draft. This is exactly what we talked about when we discussed what the Carolina Panthers need to do heading into this year is go from awful to average in a whole bunch of spots, right? You can't go and aim for Mike Evans immediately or T Higgins immediately. You kind of have to take the worst wide receiver room in the NFL and get to average with it. Mm -hmm. You've done that hopefully better than that at the guard center guard combination this past season too. Um, look, this is from Matt Harmon, who charts basically every single wide receiver under the sun. I want to reiterate that this is 2022 and not 2023, which, by the way, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, fire defensive coordinator, or excuse me, offensive coordinator, you go through some quarterback turmoil at the same time. Uh, we can get into a little bit of maybe why they didn't want Deontay Johnson here in a second, but just some quotes here from uh, Matt Harmon. Simply put, Deontay Johnson is one of the best separators in the NFL. He doesn't just fall into massive targets here every year. He earns that volume because he's almost always open. There's no route Deontay Johnson can't run. There's no area of the field he can't dominate as a route runner. Again, for $10 million and a drop in 70 picks. This is a great, great move by uh, Dan, Dan Morgan and Dave Canales. We've seen Deontay kind of have some blow up spots on the sideline at times. And there seems like there's always been something in the media with him. So I wonder if like that is one of the reasons why both sides wanted to leave Pittsburgh. So yeah, I I'm, I'm with Matt on that separation. He can run every single route from a bunch of different alignments, all that stuff. I wish he was a little bit stronger and totally. more physical at the, at the catch point. Like that's, that is his weakness right now. I think, and that's I think why he has another weakness drops. where it comes to his strength on top of that. And it's after the catch, like he, he goes down often. Yeah. On first contact, he has some boneheaded plays after the catch too. That fumble on the like, sideline, do you see that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What yeah. was that? Sometimes he tries to do too much. Right. Sometimes um, he will try to run south instead of going north. Sure. You know, the name of his game on this offense is going to be, hey, create separation and win. Because even that. Even if he just Huge catches win. the ball and falls, yeah. that is much better than a yeah. bunch of the wide receivers <laughs> yeah. could do on the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Last Give him the Tyler Lockett plan and see, see what happens. That would be a great first step. Now, what if, Hayden? I know right. that they're spending $10 million here, but actually it's only about $3 million more than what Dante Jackson was eating up here. And by the way, again, Dante Jackson was off this roster. Just make another splash and go and try to get Hollywood Brown on top of this, and that would be a really, really fun grouping. It would be that'd be pretty tiny for my liking, yeah. uh, but like they throw throw shit at the wall. I guess yes. like anything happens. But it the other thing I was gonna say, the wide receiver trade market make it make sense. Amari Cooper goes for what a, a fifth, fifth round pick. This is free. This is basically free. Uh, because you said, and then uh, Chase Claypool goes for a second round pick. Right. Like what? Marquise Brown goes for a first round pick. Like what, what are we just making shit up? <laughs> like seriously, like yeah, I, I mean it's, it's all based on, on what someone is willing to pay. You know, it's all yeah. based on what someone is but willing it, to pay. It doesn't make sense. It's not based no. off the production or the film. It's about vibes, I guess. I, I, I there, there must have been something behind the scenes too in in Pittsburgh where, you know, keeping Deontay Johnson not even for this season when you're switching to a new quarterback, when you're switching to a new offensive coordinator, and now it's basically. George Pickens, Pat Fryermuth, Darnell Washington, and Calvin yeah. Austin. And we'll see what the Steelers do after this. But, you know, at the very least, Deontay Johnson's a serviceable player. And you would have thought that Mike Tomlin and Arthur Smith and company would have wanted this. But again, it sounds like Deontay Johnson just wanted to get out of here. And maybe I, I highly doubt that they immediately give him a contract, but maybe he knew that his future was not in Pittsburgh and he wanted to get a head start on that. Interesting. Yeah. The the other thing I think with we talked about in the Russell Wilson video, a lot of play action. And obviously, Arthur Smith has used multiple tight ends. I do wonder if the Steelers were always going to add another wide receiver. And then Deontay didn't know if he was going to be in these two wide receiver sets, which the yeah. Steelers could have a bunch next year. So obviously, this trade for how little the Steelers got in return here 
they have massive holes at wide receiver. They already cut Allen Robinson, who wasn't like that much of a factor anyways, but we're assuming George Pickens is going to take this leap. I love George Pickens uh, attached to, to Russ Wilson, but the number two wide receiver at this point is up, up for grab. So maybe it's like Brian Thomas Jr. in the first round, something like that. But this also, like you're saying, this is a corner that was going to be cut. They yeah. still need a second corner for the Steelers too. So they just like lost a starting wide receiver and probably didn't fill a starting cornerback spot with this type of player too. So it's, it was an interesting decision. I think probably the answer with this when it doesn't make sense is there are off field reasons on why something wasn't working and we'll see if we get the details of those. But somehow Mike Tomlin is still going to win nine games next year. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what the man does. Um, very interesting. Very interesting to watch this. By the way, all of you that are watching this video right now, so many of you live in North Carolina. Guess what is in North Carolina now? The underdog sports book. Ladies and gentlemen, on Hayden's hat. You can check it out on my cell phone. Look, this is our first state with a sports book. You, you, my home state of North Carolina. I need all of you that are watching this right now to download the underdog sports book. Enter promo code Josh and you get your first bet as a mulligan. So even if you lose, you win, you get your money back. Please download this app. Please play on it. It is different experience than anything out there else mm -hmm. on the market. And you're the first state that we get to launch it with. You're the first ones that get to play on it. So go and do it right now. And if you are in North Carolina, you already have the underdog fantasy app. The underdog sportsbook app is two totally different things. Yes. You can bet on the games, parlays, single game projections, all of that stuff is live out there. This is huge news for us as a company. So if you're in North Carolina and want to support us, this was huge. And also, I would just say, very clean de design. More games are coming. This is built on our own technology here. So this is a huge step for us as a company out there. And we are very, very excited for you guys to be able to play. Yeah, if you're watching college basketball coming up the ACC tournament, NCAA tournament, you can bet on that with the Underdog Sportsbook app. Same thing with NBA, watching Brandon Miller go off every single night. When you're watching these games, think of Underdog Sports, think of Underdog Fantasy, and play on both platforms. All right, we will talk to you all on the next video.